what's up guys i am joe from workbench and we have a quick tutorial this week somebody asked me a question i thought it would actually make a good tutorial so they wanted kind of like an ios type scroll where the thing that's in the center gets bigger and the other things kind of recede in the background so i figured that could be done pretty easily with an expression but first things first let's look at how after effects actually lays out this grid so after effects uses a cartesian plane and i believe it's quadrant four where the origin in this case is up over here instead of uh, where you would expect it to be normally like in quadrant two i think it is so that all of these numbers would gain as they go up and to the right. Instead, After Effects gains as it goes to the right and gains as it goes down. So what we want is a range to set this here to zero, this to negative 540, and this to 540. So basically all we're gonna do is take this, whatever value these text blocks are at, and subtract 540. So that'll make this line zero, it'll make this line 540, and this would be negative 540. So let's look at the expression. Go over here, hit UU to open it up, and since this is parented to a null, we actually have to use a two comp expression because otherwise the position of this layer is actually in relation to the null, not to the comp. So the first line of our expression is y equals this layer dot two comp zero, zero, zero. I'll put this in the notes so you guys can just copy and paste it, but I just want you to know how it works. So in the next line, we're taking the actual y value from that. So that's why there's y and then there's the brackets for one. That means we're using the second position in the array because the two comp expression will give us an x, y, and z value. So we're taking the y value. We're doing that subtraction of 540. And since that gives us a range of negative 540 to 540, we really only need the 0 to 540 value. We just really need to know how far away from the center the text is. So we're passing that through a math.abs which is absolute value function, which basically just says if it's a negative 540, it's 540. So it just drops the negative from the number. So in the next line, we're using the linear function to give us a new scale. And so what this basically means is linear as y goes from zero to 540, we're gonna scale it from 150. So at zero, which is the center point, our maximum scale is 150 to 10. So as y goes from zero to 540, the scale goes from 150% to 10%. And then next line, we're just setting the array of the scale, each side of the scale to be that value. So if it's 150, it'll be 150, 150, you know, 10, 10, and so on. And that's the basis for how the whole thing works. So now as you scroll through this thing, or if I were to just do this, you can see it'll change. So let's go check out a more complicated example, because you can tie this to a whole bunch of different things. So we're basically using that same kind of expression, except for in this case, we're using ease instead of linear, because ease will actually make it like smoothly end up into the end points. Whereas linear will scale evenly from here to here, basically giving us a straight edge on here. Ease will actually curve it so that it scales less and less as it gets up here. And so in this case, we're easing as it goes from zero to 540, we're going zero to a blur setting. So on this null, I actually have a setting for blur. I have a, se a setting for minimum brightness so that this can actually go darker as it gets there. I have a setting for minimum scale so that it actually could go small, negative, even if you wanted. So we'll just undo that. And so, as I said, it's just the same kind of expressions on each one of these. The scale one's the same as it was before other than the ease. And opacity like blur only has one value, so it just ends with the easing expression. And you'll notice in between, there's the connection to the slider. So instead of going like 100 to a hard-coded value of like 10, we're going from 100 to the minimum brightness slider. And that's it. And that's all you need to boldly go where no man has gone before. All right, guys, I am Joe from Workbench. If you want to help support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great content. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.